Hi guys, welcome to Scalar 2. We're going to be having a look at all the new features in Scalar 2 and look at some of the refined and older features that have been brought over from Scalar 1. If you're new to Scalar, Scalar is an inspirational MIDI tool that helps you write and compose your own music and chord progressions. It's a world first in being able to detect the notes that you're playing and offer you scales and chords based on your notes. Uh, it's not so much a workflow video today, it's more an overview and tutorial video. So if you purchase Scalar 2, you'll know exactly what the feature set and most of the features are. I'll be making a series of workflow videos which show you how to use Scalar and its features in situ. So stay tuned and I look forward to taking you through Scalar 2. So there you go, Scalar 2 would look familiar to most Scalar users, but for those of you who don't know, you can effectively just start by choosing a scale, choosing a song, or choosing an artist chord progression, or you can just detect what you're doing. So we're already in, by default in detect mode. I can just hit the record key, and I can just detect some notes that I'm playing. And it'll correctly tell me that I'm in the C minor scale, but it'll also tell me I could be an A flat major, E flat major, F minor. I can audition any of those scales. Or I can just get some information on the scales. Um, new to Scalar 2 is the audio detection. So I can now come over to audio detection. I can do a bunch of things. I can put Scalar on an audio track and detect audio, or I can just actually drag and drop audio, which is really cool, straight onto Scalar, and it'll actually detect detect, you can see there it's going to detect that audio file and tell me the, um, the actual chords within the audio file and also the scale that I'm in. Really cool feature. Um, okay, let's choose our own scale. Let's go to scale and let's go to um, C minor. I'll choose, uh, I can filter by notes and types or I can just type it in, but let's just go to C minor here. Um, I'm going to bind this area, here's the actual notes, and now with one figure I can play through the diatonic chords of C minor. Or I can go to songs, for example, just to look for some inspiration. I can go down to, say, let's go to some of the new chord sets in uh, Scalar 2, let's go for synth wave 4. Um, Scalar's got loads of uh, really cool sounds in it. Let's go to Super Saw. These are all internal sounds. Um, and I'm going to bind the section A, which is the selection that I've made, Synthwave 4. Let's have a listen to those. Um, let's choose, let's go for another example. Let's go Cinematic, let's go Epic, and let's choose the Strings Ensemble patch. Yeah, really nice. Uh, we've also got, as I said before, several chord sets um, provided by world famous artists. Let's go to something new in Scalar 2. Let's go to Alexander Nettlebeck jazz musician and let's choose um, something unjazzy maybe. Let's go to Celestial Existence. Yeah, really nice. We've also got um, a selection here where you can have your own user chord sets um, and save your own chord sets and import other people's chords which are really, really cool. Um, okay, let's go to back to the C minor scale. Um, so in the first section here, I'm just playing the triads. I could also play sevenths, ninths. I've also got different voicing, so different way to voice those. So these are again made by um, world famous musicians and artists. So let's go, say for example, I go to voicing six. Suddenly I can make that C minor scale a bit more interesting. Yeah, really cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the triads of C minor and I'm going to have a look at. Um, the progression builder, which is basically effectively where we build our own chords. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like to do. Firstly, I'd like to look for a substitute for D 
diminished here. There's a, a few things I could do. I could right click and I get a menu on all the chords. One of the things I could do is edit chords and I can immediately just um, substitute in a chord and then have it replaced. Um, I'd also like to go back maybe say to the voicings which had some really nice uh, options. I like the way it finished on the C minor chord back there. So really easy way to just pick and choose. I could also come back up to Alexander's um, chord sets and replaced uh, my E major with his E major. Um, and just really nice way to, to just get and edit chord progressions. You can also um, insert chords in the builder. You can insert or you can actually replace, which is a really cool function um, to be able to do. One of the fantastic features of Scalar 2 um, is, are the expressions. Now, what the expressions are is it's a way for us to play those chords in a way a pianist might play them. And so what we did is we went to lots of fantastic pianists and musicians and asked them to interpret or give us uh, their interpretation of how they may play chords. And we took those um, patterns and we've now applied them in Scalar. Let's have a look at some really great examples. Let's go to Expressions, let's turn it on. So within Expressions you've got your normal arpeggio and strumming over from Scalar 1, but now you've got within Expressions you've got performances, phrases and rhythms. Let's look at performances. It's broken up into Italian musical terms of adagio, espressivo, moderato and vivace going from slowest to, to fastest. But let's just choose the default one. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. really nice um, performances. Let's uh, go to a faster, more alive category. Let's go to Vivace and let's go to Similar. Yeah, they're really just, they're, they're actually quite amazing and so great to come up with instant um, ideas in terms of writing music or or just um, um, writing parts or melodies and so forth. Speaking of melodies, um, one of the great things that we've also added is uh, phrases. Now, performances are basically the one chord that you've got, and um, we're only going to interpret the actual notes belonging to those chords. Phrases are melodic phrases based upon the chords that you're playing, and they're really beautiful. Let's try um, again, same kind of breakup. Let's go con spirito, played with spirit, and let's go amore, love. Let's try another one. Let's have a look at the next one. Let's go anima. So now there's another fantastic feature here, and that is chord-based or scale-based. Those the melodic elements within those phrases can be chord-based or scale-based. So what happens is if it's chord-based, I move a chord, and the melody goes up. Um, I can key switch between chord here and scale-based here, and it'll keep the melodic content the same, but just move um, the actual chords up and down, a great way of generating fantastic new harmonic content. And you can switch between the two, which is really cool when you're writing music. So they're chord based. Let me switch to, let me switch to scale based. So being able to switch between chord-based and scale-based melodic content within the phrases just really opens up the world of possibilities when creating music. Now you can also um, humanize. Let's uh, go back to make it a little bit more obvious. Let's go to performances. Let's pick a performance and let's go espressivo affrettando. Uh, 
Um, everything's played fairly straight, but we've got a wonderful humanized feature and you can humanize the velocity or the timing or both. Now it's subtle, but it's really effective. You can really hear that the, um, how hard each note is being hit and where exactly they're being played is slightly um, humanized, make, making for a much more realistic feel. Again, really lovely. Let me show you another fantastic feature which I, I absolutely adore. Uh, let's go to performances actually. Let's go to Adagio and let's go to Breve. Okay, so we've got a keys lock here. Now, they're, they're really cool in that you can just turn it on and as you can see the lock keys, if I try and play a bad note, it'll just force it back down into the right scale. That's all pretty straightforward, but now I can play in my right hand just the notes of the chord or the notes of the chord and its extensions. Really fantastic way to write melodies. For those of us who don't have much theory, what it basically means is you can be sitting in the one position and play the same notes and as you move up and down the um, chords in your left hand, it'll stick the notes to the right chord. So a really good way of coming out with melodies. Let's take a listen. really cool um, and one of the fantastic things about Scalar and one of the heavily requested features for Scalar 1 is the ability to export exactly what you're hearing. Now we've always had uh, the ability to just drag that chord progression there and that's the chord progression that you're looking at but we now also have a MIDI capture which is a fantastic um, way to actually capture whatever it is you're doing. So if I turn it on um, it's now recording the MIDI and anything that I play, it will capture. Let's go through that um, chord and phrase again. Now, if I just stop and drag that right across you'll be able to see that it's captured all the actual notes um, that I've played. Let me just show you there. There you go. All the actual notes that I played, the chords, the melodic content, everything captured. So you can just assign that to any instrument you like. One of the fantastic new features in Scalar 2 is edit mode. So when we click on edit mode where we've got the capacity to change the way each chord is played. Now, as you know from Scalar 1, you hit play. Uh, and it plays through the lot. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go into settings. There's plenty of things we can change in Scalar. Um, I'm going to go into the playback and the chord duration, I'm going to make the chord duration four beats or one bar if you like. Now if I hit play, much better. Now I'm going to, uh, I can change my chord progression from here. I'm going to select um, and just get rid of a few things here. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to grab my F minor I'm going to right click, I'm going to edit chord and I'm going to make it an F major. So I'm going to bind this area here. Now I've got my four chords, I can play them. Um, and I can play them here. Um, but what I can also now do is I can control click or right click on the play button and now I have door sync. Uh, it's synced to the door. So if I hit play my door, and you'll see when it loops around, it'll loop around the actual chords. Yeah, really fantastic way. And it's also a fantastic way to play with some of these performances. Let's have a look here and uh, play with a few things. Let's go, uh, for example, I'm gonna change the duration of say chord one and three. I'm gonna go half the duration. Um, you can choose any duration you want and I'm gonna repeat them, repeat them both. Hit play on the door. So 
So not only can I play with the octaves and inversions and the semitones here in edit mode, I can change the duration and repeats. And one of the fantastic things in Scalar 2 is being able to change the playback performances of each chord. So let's say I'm going to turn on and go to expression and I'll leave that on a, a cento and then I'm going to turn on the arpeggio for chord number two. Um, and I'm going to go back to expression here and I'll just choose the next one, adagetto. And of course, you can just move them left and right here as well. Um, you can change the speed and the timings of each phrase. And now if I hit play on my door, So I want that to go twice as fast, for example, that final one. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. It's a really amazing way to be able to write unique chord progressions and melodic content all in the one hit or while synced to your door. And one of the great things about edit mode is it's always active. So if I was to come back into the main window and trigger any of these chords, it's telling me edit mode is has been changed and now I can you know create or play my own uh, chord progression and melodic content based upon what I did in the edit mode yeah really fantastic and of course, you know, you're still in door sync mode here, so you can choose any of the great sounds that we've got in Scalar 2 and just hear how it sounds. So you can use it as an instrument, and that's part of the thing that we really wanted is to be able to keep you living in the Scalar ecosystem whilst you're writing your music. Here it is, square saw, hit play on the door. Okay, let's have a look at the modulation page. I think it's a really cool page, heavily requested features, and there's, there's lots you can do out there. Now, modulation is something that many advanced composers or producers love to do, and those of us on the other side who are just learning about modulating, um, Scale is really intended to be a great resource for both. So high-end composers can use it um, as a resource tool to be able to find which keys share similar properties and where and how to modulate to and other composers can look at it and say, I want to go from here, I think I want to go there, how do I get there? Let's go for an example, let's pull up scales. Um, I can search by notes or types, but I'm just going to look for E minor here. Uh, there's the E minor scale. I copy it all down because I may want to make some alterations and I'm going to go into Super Saw. I'm going to bind that area and listen to those chords. <laughs> Cool, so I've been playing that, that's great. I'm gonna to go to my modulation page. Um, there's my chord progression. I can see the circle of fifths here. Um, now, let's assume we don't know much about music theory. What they effectively is it's telling us is the closer we go, the more chords that are shared and the more natural that modulation is going to sound. So, cool, if that's what you're telling me, um, F sharp minor looks pretty close to the E minor, I'm gonna click it. Now it's doing a few things. It's telling me, of course, my original chord progression, my chord progression and how it will sound in my new chosen scale and a way to get there. Um, what's fantastic as well is you can now see that there's a bunch of keys up here, key switches, which allow me to trigger the different lanes. So I can switch between lane one, lane two, and lane three, as you can see over here. What that does is that says, okay, this is my chord progression. <laughs> What would that sound like in F-sharp minor? Well, I just hit the key switch and now I'm playing the bottom row. And the middle one is telling me how I would get there. So if I uh, key switch between the three, let's say I go the top, then the, the suggested pathway and the bottom. Yeah, really cool, fantastic way to really easily do modulations. Okay, 
Great, I wanna have a look at something else called pad view, but before I do, I'm gonna just prepare these in patterns. So here down the bottom, uh, you can add as many patterns as you want, and each pattern represents a row of chords. So let's effectively call this one, which is my first one, my verse, okay? Um, I'm now gonna grab these uh, suggested modulation pathway, and I'm gonna add it to a new pattern. Now you can see it's created a new pattern, and here I'm gonna call this my bridge, for example, and another way I can select is I can also just click the uh, command key and I can multi-select and I can add them to, uh, to a new pattern and I can just call that chorus. Um, and now one of the fantastic things in Scalar 2 is the ability to come in a pad view and now I've got my three sections. This is a really flexible way of working. I can also key switch between each of these lanes and I can write multiple chord progressions and name them how I want. I can even duplicate clear and, and make as many different lanes, building different progressions for different parts of songs or using it just how I want. And I can obviously key switch between the lot too. There are several new presets in the modulation page and we're, we're um, creating new ones and adding new ones all the time. Let's go to a C major scale, shall we? Um, and let's uh, go to the brass ensemble patch and we'll bind this section down here. I'll turn the voice grouping on and I'm gonna to go to modulation. Um, now that's my standard C major chord, but if I go to another one of the presets, let's go to the chromatic median presets. I really love this. Every time you hit a chord, it'll come up with a different lane based upon the last chord. So if I hit the C major, it's now giving me all these different chords. Now, I can um, go to A minor, which it's blue, so it's telling me, hey, that's part of the scale. This one has some notes, but it's not part of the scale, and this doesn't have any notes. But it's just about experimentation. You see, I could go from C major to A major to G flat minor, back to D major, and I've just randomly followed a succession of chords and there it is um, I love them so I'll select them all and I'll drag them in and that's my new chord progression really great way to come up with very very unique chord progressions of course you can use Scalar as a MIDI effect and control third-party instruments across all doors here I'm controlling Omnisphere it's just a straight patch and of course I can turn on the performances and control third-party instrument using those as well one of the things we haven't looked at is rhythms I'll go to Volante fast I'll have a look at some of these rhythms here Yeah, really fantastic. Thanks for watching. That's Scalar 2 in a nutshell. We hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to make a bunch of workflow videos to show you exactly how you can use Scalar 2 within your own compositions and tracks.